See a sunrise person. Hi. Nice to be here. Great to have you. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Thanks for taking for the time. Of course. Best selling author, North and Normal, Nearly Normal, Fiction Writer, Clay Artist. <laughs> but now, like, top of mind, well, maybe not mm -hmm. every day for you, but for most of us, or perhaps top of mind lately, like, and I had a conversation with someone last night about, you know, we all kind of want to do what you've done and are doing, right? <laughs> And, and I saw, no, it's real. Right. <laughs> and I saw on your, on your Instagram, on the highlight, on one of the, one of the highlights, mm -hmm. it, it is called like living the dream or the dream because you've done it, right. You've turned Ooh, the book right. into a movie, yeah. which for yeah. writers and creatives and aspiring folks like that, like it's kind of like the Holy grail. Well, uh, yes, I had very little to do with it, though. I mean, uh, yes, I well, wrote, I wrote yeah, the book. The well, let's <laughs> I take a little life. credit. Yeah. I live the life. We'll take the credit for that. And I and I wrote the book, um, yeah. actually books, because it's like based on both of them. But um, I think that, you know, yes, it, it's been amazing and, and flattering and validating and all of those things that you would expect when someone decides to you know, pick up your, your life story and turn it into a film. Um, and it could have gone very badly. Of course, I didn't have any creative control and, um, I was really just kind of putting my trust into this small group of people, but I just think they did such an amazing job mm -hmm. and they told the story that was, you know, like taking two big fat books and condensing it down into a 90 minute movie. Like what parts of the story are you going to tell? You know, it's a big, it's, it's, that's a big decision for them. And I think they really decided it was the mother daughter relationship, which is the core of my story. So, um, yeah, I think they did a really great job at, you know, complexly layering that. Yeah. And let's, so for those who, the three people that aren't aware of, of your story and, and the background, I'm glad, uh, you, it did narrow down to the mother daughter mm -hmm. relationship, which mm -hmm. was kind of more evident in the film than in in the books i right. i felt but the mm -hmm. the story is your story is, is that you essentially grew up in the wilderness out of the 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 direction of your grandfather mm -hmm. the he was the the major influence he thought society was completely backwards fear based and so the 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 route was you spent your first 8 8 or 10 years right um living in the alberta mm -hmm. and bc wilderness mm -hmm with your grandparents, your single mother, and this was how you grew up. And eventually you were, you know, nudity, drugs, alcohol, all the, all the things. And this is how mm -hmm. you were, were formed from the mm -hmm. years of zero to eight. But mm -hmm. eventually you're like, I want to live like everyone else. Yeah. And so by the age of 13, you, you got into modeling and set out on your own. And that was your way to escape. Yes. That was my, my, my normal, my path. Yeah, normal. yeah. Yeah. And, but through that, like you said, there, there, there's, there's so much that the film could have gone on to. Yes. But the, the mother daughter relationship, which got, which got emphasized in the film was, was sad. It was, I mean, and it was a sad story between yeah. my mom and I, you know, um, I mean, I had the blessing of a really independent minded family who, you know, refused to live by other people's rules. And they decided to just like, you know, create this existence that was like teepees <laughs> and hunting and, um, you know, no electricity, no rules, no nothing. And so that in a way created sort of a blank slate for me, I think, to be whoever I wanted to be. But that's hard for kids because kids need guidance and they need stability and they need boundaries. And my mom didn't really create any of those things for me. She was only 16 when she had me. She was a single mom. Um, in a lot of ways, I know she was doing the best she could because she loved me like crazy. That's for sure. But um, I was just dragged kind of, you know, I guess dragged along on a really crazy ride mm -hmm. with her and whatever boyfriend she happened to have at the time. Um, and my grandparents were kind of like this unstable stability that would kind of float in and out of my life um, until my mom and I moved to the city when I was almost 10. And then I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like my family's too crazy. My mom is too 
unstable. And so I started to sort of formulate this, like, well, what can I do to get out? Well, we didn't have any money, didn't have much support, but I was tall and thin and people told me I could be a model. So I just kind of put that in my head and I was like, that's going to be my escape. So when I was 13, I just went off. And I mean, by the time I was 14, I was in New York by myself. Yeah. Yeah. So 15, like, I was in Paris by myself. So yeah. yeah, it was like, but that wasn't crazy, believe it or not, because I had like taken care of myself and my mom for so long in a lot of ways. Cause I was like the responsible person. <laughs> well, when you, but like when I think of my childhood, when I was 13 or 14, like, yeah, I was doing this and I was doing that. I was, yeah. you know, I was totally had it together right, or, or right, whatever, right. but and I don't have kids, but you have kids. Yeah. And when you look at those ages right now, and do you match what you were oh, yeah. doing at that age? And you're like, <laughs> wow, interesting. It's very interesting. Like there is no reflection on your, your own experiences in your past, like having your own kids and watching the phases that they, and the personality that they have and the things that they need to deal with at, at that age compared to what you needed to deal with. And um, yeah, I can safely say that none of my kids at 14 would have been <laughs> ready to live in New York on their own. And they shouldn't be, you know, I mean, that's, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, I've been really lucky to be able to raise my kids in a way that feels a lot healthier to me than the way that than I was raised. And, um, I'm sure I'm messing them up in other ways. Yeah. 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 I, uh, oh yeah. You got them. Part of it. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the, as the story continues, your, your modeling career was, was 20 years or so, correct? Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, yeah, I started at 13 and I did it full time until I was about 30 and then I continued to do it part time until I was like 40. So nice. yeah. Yeah. So and it, pretty long, but it, it, it was, it was, it was that kind of headstrong, intention in the beginning to to, yes. to have that and and use that as your escape but then once you know in, in reading the books especially the the second one nearly mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. you get you get more of the story of what right. that was like and it 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 had its own challenges mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. world living alone in that industry and you know still not having whatever the support the parent parental support totally Yes, it was extremely challenging. I mean, I felt very, very alone a lot of the time. Um, but, uh, you know, it's funny because like, of course, modeling has this reputation of like, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's the kind of industry that, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna head down a bad way because you're like, there's so much drugs and, and, you know, you're asked to compromise your values a lot. Um, for me, I had a very different experience. I was just so not interested in any of that stuff, I guess, because I was raised with like lots of nudity, lots of drugs, lots of partying uh, that I just wasn't interested. And so I was able to really hold my keep my head above water that way. Um, and the best thing about modeling for me was, you know, I grew up having very few friends, um, you know, it was either you know, in the wilderness, or I was, I was the, the new girl at school who was like the freak from the wilderness who smelled like pot and wore horrible clothes. And, and so, um, yeah, making friends was a real challenge for me. And when I got into modeling, suddenly I had this really great community of, you know, other girls, women like me who often, you know, had not grown up like me, but had different challenges and we all really bonded together and it was um for the first time like my in my 20s i had this really great family of friends cool so that was awesome and does that does that kind of override or or put to rest the shit like the 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 challenges that you had as a as a child not having friends and probably always feeling like you didn't fit in or or did you have to kind of return to those insecurities or challenges later on? Um, those insecurities never go away. Like I'm still the girl who walks, I'll walk into a party and I'll like, you know, go and sit in a corner and I'm surprised if anyone wants to talk to me, you know, like that just will never go away. I don't think um, I can like, you know, we all have the mask, right. That mm -hmm. we can put on when we need to. And um, so 
so yeah, on the one hand, yeah, I feel confident because I know I can go out there and make friends and like, you know, you know, have, have a conversation and say the right things, but I'm still that kid from the wilderness who everyone thinks is weird. <laughs> oh. But do you, you, do you, do you kind of own that in, oh, in yeah. a sense? Yeah. Right. I do. And yeah. it yeah. kind of makes you interesting and have interesting things to think about and, and say yes. in different perspectives. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I'm always very open about my own insecurities. Yeah. You know? So I think maybe that's maybe people like that i yeah. don't know i definitely don't pretend um that you know, things are all great so do you do you think like reflecting on on your grandfather specifically these days and like his intentions and then kind of living out his dream mm -hmm. living out away from it all in the yeah. wilderness away from 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 all the crazy do, do you ever have these moments throughout the day or the week or, or the month is you know, thinking about what's going on in, in, in your world, your kid's world, or the world at, at a whole where mm -hmm. you're like, man, pop a dick. He's so right. Right? <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy out there. And, and, and we're all wrapped up in all these wild things. And there's all this horrible mm -hmm. stuff going on in, in the world. Do you mm -hmm. ever, I don't, like, I don't, I think I know the answer. You don't want to pick up and, and, and move out mm -hmm. again to the, the mm -hmm. teepee. But do you ever give them perhaps a little bit more credit now to, for, for having that, oh, yeah. that, that vision. Oh my God. Absolutely. Yes. And I admire him for it. I think that, you know, a lot of his values and his vision was based in, in something really, you know, something that I wish more people would, would aspire to, I guess you could say, um, you know, the, the real, the desire to live a life that's like, it sounds kind of crazy, but like more wholesome and more pure and more, you know, not having to be inundated with like all the craziness that, that we have to deal with and the, and the, the regulations and, and, you know, pollution and chemicals and noise. And, and I mean, oh my God. And that was the seventies, right? Yeah, like yeah, look yeah, at it now. Yeah, and yeah. the world is like, I spend like way too much time. Just, I think we all do at this age. Like we, worry about yeah. the state of the world and it's just so overwhelming and especially when I you know have with my kids I'm just like oh my god how are they going to manage it and and how is it how is all of this affecting them and yeah um there's definitely a huge part of me that would love to just scoop them up and and hide them away somewhere and have them not have to deal with because why should they have to deal with all this crap you know I mean yeah sure we've We've all, we're all contributing. I get that. We're all contributing to the mess, but I just, I think that like we need a radical change, obviously. And maybe that could be part of the radical change. I, I don't know, but I can't do it. You know, I'm not doing it. I'm <laughs> but if again, like if, if, so how would you summarize your grandfather's message though? Well, hmm, good and question. What, what you, I mean, what you, I watched your TEDx again recently mm -hmm. uh, and what, what, what you mentioned, he said in that one quite, mm -hmm. quite clearly and specifically was that, you know, his, his vision was, was, uh, don't go to fear, go, totally. go to love. Yeah. And that's, you know, at the highest, the highest level that, yes. that, that can sort a lot of things out because all the crap going on in the world Very these days true. is a yeah. thousand percent fear based. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you're living out either physically or metaphorically in, in the woods with, with your, your tribe and your clan and you're all, yeah. Uh, not scared of each other and operating kind of from the same mindset. It's a, it's a different, it's a different world. Totally. Totally. And that, and I think that, that what you just said right there really kind of summed it up. So thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. It, I mean, he was all about, um, I mean, he took it to the extreme, you know, cause he yeah. was, he was all about like love versus fear. And for him, like, even doing things like, you know, going into the bathroom and shutting the door behind you, that was living in fear, you know, because sure. you know, you shouldn't be afraid of, you know, your body or shame or people seeing it or whatever. Um, but I think that at, at the core, like he definitely had the right idea. And I for sure have gone through my life, you know, trying to continue to live that it was shown to me so many times when I was young that, you know, I, I, I have gone after a lot of things and, and refused to give up on things that maybe other people would have, um, because I've seen that determination. And, um, and it's true, like, actually, just recently, I was trying to make a really big life decision. And, um, 
and I, I was remembering like, okay, like weigh the pros and cons. Yes. But where's the fear where, which mm. side is the fear on? And as soon as I figured out wh which side it was on, the answer became really clear. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you're, if you're choosing between two things and one was fear based fear of what might happen if I do this or don't. Do yeah. This, right. And, and, and that's what my grandfather always used to say too. He would always say, don't ever, don't waste any energy thinking about the what might happen. A lot of people would disagree with that. <laughs> um, so what did you do in this instance? You, you, you thought about the bad things that could happen, but went that way anyways? Yes, exactly. Because yeah. of the good things that could happen. That's right. But what if the bad things still happen? So um, be it. They're well, not actually that bad. Then they're not, they're actually not that bad. Yeah, you've not, probably been through worse. Here, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in, in a major life decision making process, it's sit down and think about the, yes, where the, and, where the fear is. I kept thinking about, okay, the fear for me was lying in like, you know, the, the position that I might be putting other people in. And it was like, well, no, because actually, you know, if I, if I really think about it, I'm actually putting them in a position that will, will be better for them. But, you know, sometimes you just have to get through the short term, short term hard to get to the long term good. Nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. so, and then continue on your story, because that theme comes up again, like sort of towards the end of your modeling career, you, mm -hmm. you move back to Vancouver and you were in your second marriage. Right. But I think it was, you know, and there was a, a failed business. The marriage yeah. wasn't doing well. Yeah. And but it was it was and there's there's kind of uh there's a lot of people in this situation a lot of women, I guess, in this situation yeah. where it's they're kind of stuck in a relationship, um, be it financially or or whatever it is. Totally. So it's a crappy relationship. Yeah. Business isn't working. Life isn't great, but even in that instance for you, you chose to get out of that yes. and, and, and not live that way yeah. any longer. So without money or a job yeah. or whatever, you're like, I'm not staying here. Yeah. I have to change this and go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was that a perfect example of, of just facing fear right, totally. right, right, right in the eye. And that was the hardest thing I've ever done for sure in my entire life was that, that you know, that event, um, and everything that had led up to it. And then, you know, you think, okay, now I've made the decision. Like I, and also I had a young child, you know, so it was, it was like, like no support. Well, very little, you know, I had some friends and I had a little bit of support from my dad, but, um, you know, my mom had just passed away. Um, I had zero money, like not even a car. Um, a young kid and my, my business had just like completely blown up. Um, so yeah, I decided to leave anyway, because it was, um, it was, it was not working and I could really see that. Yeah. Short term, hard, long term, way better and short term, hard. Well, it got a lot worse before it got better. I'll tell you, but now that, you know, I'm on the other side, obviously it was, it was the right thing to do. Um, but uh, it took uh, it took everything I had, and I I don't know if I could go through anything like that again. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was so scary. Well, it's it's, but you must hear similar stories of, of oh, particularly yeah. women, and and I've heard heard of of stories where where they need to plan for like a year to get out of a relationship, totally, totally. and and like you know yeah. systematically make a plan of, of of what to do, and then others um, have to stay in crappy relationships because yes. it's yeah. Uh, but all of that is so unfortunate. Yes, it really is. And, you know, and I, I, I see it like with women, especially who have, you know, raised families that like really putting your career aside and focusing on that. It's like, yeah, sure. It's supposed to, there's supposed to be some sort of equality when you split up, if that's the situation that, you know, you've decided to go with between you and your your husband they're the breadwinner you're not um but the reality of it plays out differently and mm -hmm. it's um it's uh yeah i think i think a lot of women feel very trapped and i can totally understand why it's it's very hard so what at that time in particular for the short term pain what what was the long term vision or the long term plan what was 
was mm. was that when writing started to bubble to the surface like yeah. i need to yeah. like this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna start so <laughs> what a yeah. great what a great thing to do when you need money right start writing <laughs> oh my god that's so true but was that was that like the 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 thing pulling you forward or the vision yeah. you're like i'm gonna make sense of this this last 30 whatever totally. years and, 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 and actually so i had started actually writing my first book before i left the marriage and before i you know, went through all of that. And um, I think that writing my story was the thing that probably gave me the strength to, to go through it. Because um, for one thing, I was, you know, taking some time to examine my past and, and see the many, many mistakes that I had made to get me get to that point where, you know, here I was in my mid thirties and everything was falling apart. And a lot of it had been because of things that I'd done wrong, you know? And so I really had to figure out how to change that. Um, and so understanding my past was a really, really big piece to, to getting there. Also, <laughs> you know, I, I had this like naive kind of hope that like, oh yeah, I'm going to write the book and you know, I'm going to get a big advance and, and that is what's going to like yes. save me oh, from so having zero other people, money. <laughs> other people have also had this thought. Oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you hear this, the, the success story, right? You're like, oh, that's going to be me. Um, and well, yeah. I'm hearing it right now, but continue, <laughs> but there, it, it's interesting how you, you get there either way. Yes, for sure. And I mean, luckily I, I did get there eventually. Like I did my book was published and that was amazing, but it took years. It, six it, years. Six years. Six years. I think, I believe it was, yeah, six years from, so it was about five years after that whole time. So, so yeah, it was um, not on the timeline that I would have chosen. And, um, but, you know, and I, I rewrote that stupid book. I don't know how many, like front to back. We're talking like complete rewrites. I don't know, at least 10, you know, yeah, probably more. How did you stick <laughs> with it for five years? Like, wh why didn't you just self-publish after year two or, or, or three or four or, or give up or like <laughs> not aim for, for a major publisher? Yeah, well, why didn't you just take the easy route? Especially since I kept these <laughs> these letters back from, you know, literary agents that were just like, ah, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> but just for context, yeah. North and Normal <laughs> has over 30,000 reviews on Goodreads. Oh, and cool. In case you didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that. So, that, so those are just the people like clicking the stars and right. writing reviews right. and stuff. So it's been read by hundreds of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I know. And it's, it's been amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it. But you that. must have known it was good. You know, so here's what I knew. I knew a couple things. I knew I had a story to tell. Yeah. A story that I had never heard anyone else tell. And that was a big reason I decided to do it because I was like, I want to know if there's other people like me out there. There's got to be, you know, there's got to be. Maybe if I can find other people who've been through something similar, I won't feel like such a freak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So there was that. Um, there was also the fact that I just loved writing. Like, I really loved it. I was horrible at it when I first started. Like, poor, like no, you have no idea. I was the worst. <laughs> I, I so don't believe it. <laughs> oh, no, no. Trust me. You yeah. can ask some of the people who read my early drafts. I, I was terrible. Okay. But okay. I loved writing. I'd always loved writing. And I, I'd, I'd always had it in my head that someday I'm going to stop modeling and I'm going to be a writer. So I... I had this like really sort of weird belief in myself about, you know, my writing and about my story. And I just decided, like, I really decided that I was just going to do it until it got done. And I was never going to self-publish and I was never going to go with a small publisher. And it was going to either get published by a major publisher or I was just, it, it was just not going to happen. But that part wasn't an option. Because I knew I was going to stick with it until it happened, even if it was, you know, in my 80s. So it was going to get published by a major publisher. So I just decided. What do you, <laughs> what, what do you and what did you, or at least in the beginning, love about writing? I think that, like, I mean, I, 
I love words. You know, I love um, forming pretty sentences. I know. <laughs> yeah. Fun. I know. It's just like you read. I'm, I'm reading Frankenstein right now oh, by Mary Shelley. Yeah. You ever read that? No, I've haven't. never read that, but like, wow. Yeah. There's you read like some sentences or some paragraphs and you just like, you stop. I'm like, my heart stops and my breathing stops. Mm-hmm. And I'm just reading it and you get to the end of the sentence and the end of the paragraph. And you're like, whoa (laughs) how did you do that yeah it's like the perfect Mm -hmm. balance and dance of all these perfect words put together and then it keeps going a little bit further and then period yeah right right exactly so So it's an art to find that it's there's that i mean i i love that and i i also something i really enjoyed about writing my story when i finally got to the point where it was like my 10th draft or whatever and and i was actually like you know, a a decent writer by that time is like, it was so much fun to find the humor in my story because Mm. my story was like kind of a downer, you know? And, um, but I started thinking like, as I wrote, like, I'm totally not a funny person. Like I'm just, you know, some people are funny and I'm just not, but I found that like when I could write, when I wrote, I, I could find and express a sense of humor Mm. that I wasn't able to verbally so that was like really fun yeah Mm -hmm. because i could just see the crazy in the situation and be like i'm just gonna make this funny but it's yeah it's a subtle (laughs) crazy because you're you you know it's crazy and you're kind of reflecting on it but you're kind of you're kind of okay with it yes yeah for sure i mean yeah i was you know by by the time i wrote my story i was like definitely healed you know um by the time you got to draft 10. yeah by the yeah. time i got to draft 10 i was definitely healed no, which isn't to say that like i you know not still affected by like what happened and also it had put me in you know i had made a lot of like i said bad life decisions based on you know things that had happened to me in the past but i when i thought of those things that had happened it didn't make me feel emotional Nice. Yeah. It's yeah. like that happened because I was at that point in yeah. life. I did that. Next time I probably wouldn't do that. So right. it's very, very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I was at, uh, was at the Writers Fest last mm-hmm. week on, on Granville Island. Mm-hmm. Lauren Groff. You ever, you ever read her? She's written yeah. Matrix and I'm like her no. biggest fan. I always okay. talk about her. And, okay. and well, I'm your biggest fan. And then oh. she's like my number two. <laughs> fates and furies and she's she lives in florida okay, she just wow yeah she just she just she just writes like this yeah. is what she does full yeah. time mm-hmm. um she reads 300 books a year yeah what? yeah and some are some are she must read so fast she, some are plays some are like short stories or um you know listen to some on audiobook like like two times speed but yeah she's like well you know if you listen to a play or or a short story you can do 10 or 15 in a in a day or something wow. like that but it was yeah i had seen her two years ago mm-hmm. and so she was back back yeah. last friday so i'm like well, i must just be in your presence because mm-hmm. she is just a phenomenal writer some people mm-hmm. have compared her to, compared her to like the modern day shakespeare oh wow she's just so in depth yeah. with her words but it mm-hmm. was it was most interesting for me to hear about her like writing process. Mm-hmm. And so she writes everything by hand. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Until the very last draft. So she writes on, wow. on, on the, the long cool. sheets, full, wow. full scab. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But so, so she'll do the first draft, write it all out, crumple it up, throw it out. Gone. Whoa. I know. That's. And then. That's a commitment. And then, and then, you know whatever whatever whatever's left over for the second draft will yeah. still be in there and then she'll just keep working it and working it and and working it wow uh, but she also <laughs> i know right so it's kind <laughs> of interesting to, to hear the dedication the yes. other the other thing which and i told my my sisters and my mom this and and they had some opinions and thoughts but mm-hmm. i thought it was pretty cool maybe it's because because i don't have kids mm-hmm. but her husband sort of made her move to, to florida i think she uh-huh. they were originally in in new england uh-huh. and she hates florida yeah right yeah i like visiting florida but yeah i don't want to live in oh, florida I, wouldn't live there. I know right <laughs> but so her deal was and this was 12 years ago or, yeah. or whatever it was mm-hmm. you know she's been writing the whole time mm-hmm. but her, her deal was all right here's the deal like she, she doesn't see any humans until the evening. Oh, she gets up at five and like her husband does the, 
the makes the lunches and gets yeah. the kids out the door and uh-huh. stuff. Uh-huh. And it's her working on her writing until the evening. So she'll, she'll write for four hours or she'll go read these books or go for walks and stuff. And nobody, nobody's in her head or anything. Well, that is quite the luxury. Truth. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I have to say, I yeah. mean, good for her. They yeah. obviously found like something that works for them. Um, that's amazing. I wrote both of these two books with like toddlers, like literally hanging. I know. So it's interesting. Like, (laughs) like, like that is a a privilege and a a luxury, but in reality, like you kind of do what you got to do if you you want to get your piece out there. Yeah. And um, I was just like, for me, I, I just, I had to be so driven because, you know, we, we, we were raising three kids and, um, you know, my family wasn't around and, um, you know, we really didn't have any help. I mean, my husband's great. He's super hands-on. He's a very involved father, but you know, he had his job. Also and... an engineer, right? Yeah, yeah that's good, right. Good yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're the best. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he was, he was great and super supportive and like gave me time whenever he could, but you know, the childcare fell to me most of it for sure. And so I just, I remember like having like one baby here, like literally, and then like one running around and another one hanging over my shoulder and, and writing like that. And I did that for years. Mm -hmm. And I think I burnt myself out though, for sure, because, um, I, I, I can't write right now. I just, I feel like I need my kids to like, I need to enjoy these years with my kids now after they move out, maybe I can think about writing again, but it's just, it's just too hard, even though they're in school now it's because it's all consuming like i've been thinking about writing a bit bit recently but Mm -hmm. even like even this podcast like whenever i'm not thinking about other stuff i'm i'm thinking about the podcast Mm -hmm. during the week because you Mm -hmm. have to totally you have to you have to think ahead to to who you're going to talk to and what how you got to promote and what the story is and and things like that you can't you have to prepare you have to prepare and you have to you have to you have to think about it but Mm -hmm. that's that's also like the fun part of writing mm-hmm. I always found mm-hmm. it, it gives you those things to think about in between the time you're thinking about life yes but it can take over and I found that for me like it was taking over you know every every empty space and I didn't want to be I didn't want that to be the case with my kids you nice. know because they're just they're they're only around in your space for so long and I want them there. So nice. So did that, when did that realization come? Was that sort of after the end of the the second memoir Um, or was that because then you started to write fiction as well? Yeah, I managed to. So I did switch into fiction and I wrote, I actually just, I I wrote like a romance series, which was kind of fun, just kind of for almost kind of for practice. You Mm -hmm. know, Um, what I really wanted to write was more like in a domestic noir vein. And I, started writing a couple of books like that and I just realized like I just I just couldn't do it you know there was like fiction is super different like it's apples and oranges yeah how do you write fiction oh, if a guy's gonna learn it's how to write so fiction where, where does he go where does he not the person to ask. <laughs> okay I'll take somebody else's course because right? it's yeah. you know after a certain while like that seems to be the the obvious you know path you can only write so many so much memoir right I mean yeah, there will be no more stories of me. Um, we'll see. But but yeah, it's it's a completely different animal. And um, I just found that like with 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 these books, I could kind of go up, go through my day because the story was always there. And yeah. then when I sat down, it's like I could think about, well, how do I want to tell that part of the story? So I could really compartmentalize. But with fiction, I was like all day I was like working out, well, you know, the plot you know oh, fiction the, fiction makes me anxious because oh, you just, have to uh, you have to come up with the the yeah. story and all the characters yeah. and, and then go backwards from there really but it must i mean it must be figure out a bull right it is of course yeah yeah and i mean i do think that like i've written outlines and first chapters for about five books and yeah. i think that for sure i will go back to them like you know i showed them to my agent she really liked a couple so uh but i just like no not until the kids are you know off on their own doing their thing and that'll i guess be my retirement <laughs> hobby <laughs> lot, lot, of, lot of years to go until then so what yeah so what happened after 
let's go back to when when North and Normal came out. Mm -hmm. Finally, you know, put five, six years into it. It's good. Mm -hmm. You got the major major publisher. People know it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, you start to promote a bit. Like what 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 was life like then when people started reading it? It was super interesting. I mean, I was definitely super nervous. Yeah. You know, right. um, I had not told anyone really in my life like the full story, except my husband, who, who knew by that time because he read drafts and and I, you know, but but everybody else, like, you know, even my close friends, they knew a little bit, but not much. And then there was like, I was living in West Van at the time. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Like if the West, some of the West Van yeah. poems, right, yeah, yeah. start reading my story. I saw them all as being, you know, very, um, they just really had their lives together, you know. And yeah. I felt like they came from like such a different background. So it was really amazing because as soon as it came out, like I started getting, you know, I would run into someone in the street or at the school, or I'd get an email and then they would have a story for me. And right. I'd be like, Oh my God, like I made assumptions about these people that were so not true. Like we've all lived through difficult things. Mm -hmm. And, um, so there was that part, which was really cool. And I was prepared for like, you know, negativity and I, I couldn't believe it, but I've, you know, the book's been out almost 10 years now and I haven't had any. Really? Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, if you go into Goodreads, you're going to see, oh, this book sucks. Yeah. You know, but like yeah. directed at me, like, you know, on social media or by email or messages or any, it's all just been really, really positive. Just kind of grateful for sharing the story. And I mean, nobody has the same story, but they, right. they have the same, same feelings or insecurities or yeah. whatever, not, not fitting in. Um, universal truths right mm -hmm. like yeah and 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 you know i think the not fitting in is 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 a huge one i think mm -hmm. that everyone at some point in their life feels like you know the freak standing against the wall <laughs> but like like your drive was to be normal and, and to fit in and and yeah same same with mm -hmm. the same with the um, a lot of people but you know the some normal people might have the opposite they may want to oh, escape yeah. escape being normal and and try to be a freak or try to be an outcast or something like that so is it is it a element of of, of grass is greener you're going to feel better over in in one compartment or or another or is it just mm -hmm. kind of you know becoming at peace with with who we really are i think it's 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 that what you just said coming becoming at peace with who you are i think that you know I mean, for me, I always knew who I was from a very young age. And I was like, I would look at my family and be like, I'm, I'm just not like these people, yeah. you know, being I was five years old, and I barely knew about the white picket fence, but I already wanted it. And um, so it was just really a matter of following that instinct for, for what I for what I wanted. Um, and I guess other, you know, some people, I guess, are born into the right circumstances and they don't have to make those big changes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure some people are born into what they think is a very boring, normal family. And then they need to break out of that. It's, mm -hmm. it's whatever. Is and then they may, they may reflect right? and go, oh, wow, that was actually pretty yeah, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as I do now, right? I mean, I, I, I go, okay, yeah, so it wasn't all bad. And sometimes I wish I could take elements of what my family did and and you know do something similar with my family but yeah nice nice <laughs> um so the film mm -hmm. pretty good it is good right yeah well i wonder yeah. I, I saw it last when was when was vancouver film i saw last um, august last yeah. july august september like a year ago. okay yeah it was a year yeah. ago yeah. yeah yeah i remember seeing it downtown yeah. but yeah i cried man <laughs> it was sad it was because you know mm -hmm. the you the mm -hmm. the character played by you also mm -hmm. also you it's just just trying to get that that right sort of love from your mom yeah and it and it and it and it doesn't really at least for me it didn't become super clear or peak towards towards the end mm -hmm. um but it was what what i remember was like kind of kind of after that it was it was like just that clarity of of the, not having that it was mm -hmm. kind of like an element of being okay with that 
and, and kind of yeah. moving on independently. Yeah. And I definitely did have to do that as a teen. And I think they, they represented that well in the movie. I don't think that in real life, I mean, I like my mom died 15 years ago and I still haven't totally made peace with, with her. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, that's the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know. It, there's nothing that life does not, there's not many bows that you can wrap around things. Sometimes things are just not going to be good. And they're going to, yeah, they're, they're gonna, yeah. that's they're how it is. They're just going to remain complex. Yeah. And I think yeah. you just have to settle in with, with being willing to, you know, I think we all like to try to simplify and label things. Um, and not everything can be. And so, you know, my mom, my relationship with my mom is one of those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what was it like seeing the film for the first time? Oh my God. I was a nervous. Were wreck. you, like, were, were you yeah. nervous because it, it was, you, you, perhaps it wasn't going to be good or it was because you know, there's going to be some, some uh, creative decisions made yes. and it's not going to, it's not going to be exactly your life and not, mm -hmm. it's not exactly going to be the book, but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the right way to do it anyway and tell the story totally. so you, you knew must have known that yeah i mean i had read the script um you know they they uh the producer was really great at like keeping me informed and like consulting with me and and letting me read it along the way so i knew that the script was good i knew i liked the script i loved the cast um i had spent a couple of days on set so i knew that everyone really knew what they were doing the director was fantastic that you know the photography was beautiful, all of that. Um, and the sets they did an, an amazing job with, but, uh, but I, yeah, I had no idea if I'm a soup. Oh, by the way. Yeah. PS. I'm like the worst, worst movie critic. Like oh, really? I hate yeah. everything. <laughs> well, Cause it's so hard to pay attention. Well, I find. I just, and usually yeah. they suck and you wasted two hours. I, there's just so few movies. I like, And I agree. Turn them off, turn them off, turn them off, and so I was like, "Oh my god, if this is one of those movies that I I'm <laughs> exactly because then you're not going to be able to hide it because right? then you couldn't be excited to promote it." Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah. I get that. So I sat, I saw it for the first time at TIFF actually when it premiered there, and um, and I was there with my husband, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And, and uh, yeah, I was super nervous, but anyway, I, I, it, it was cool because within five minutes of watching it. I knew I was going to love it because it was like the kind of movie that. Oh, I would put like on the, the first home. five minutes. Yes. Okay. The first five yeah. minutes. It was like the kind of movie that I would put on at home and I would love. So I was like, okay, I'm going to love it. And I did. Nice. And yeah. so that was a year ago. It was in the film festivals, yeah. but now it's, now it's, now it's online. Now it's, yeah, streaming. it's, um, I think it's still in some theaters actually, but I'm not totally sure. Um, but it's, yeah, it's on like Amazon prime and um, Apple TV and Google and, think a couple of other ones nice so, so yeah mm -hmm. does it come in full circle now like like that's that's really cool though right like is, <laughs> does that feel like like is it does it feel like the dream was supposed to yeah to, to feel like it, it's sure. it's great i think you don't know right until yeah. you're there like what and i didn't spend a lot of time imagining how it would feel because you know films go sideways all the time and i was just you know pleased and shocked that it actually got made because um there's so many things that can derail a project like that and it was small budget and it was covid and oh my god there was just like so many things to go wrong mm -hmm. um so i was just really happy that it got made and um yeah i mean how amazing is it that i am able to sort of leave this this i guess legacy of my family behind for my own kids, for anybody who's interested. The thing that excited me the most about the film is that, you know, unfortunately my family's all passed on, my mom and my grandparents, but if they knew <laughs> that their lives, <laughs> oh my God, have been made. <laughs> you know I think they I mean? would have a good laugh. Yeah, and right? that they were played by such amazing actors. Yeah. And, you know, um, I just think that that would, have been very cool for them my mom especially would have just been what, <laughs> what do you like what do you think she would have said would she would have 
she would have been beside herself <laughs> with excitement. Are you kidding? Right? And she wouldn't have even cared like how she was portrayed. She would, she just would have been like, and did you see how beautiful the uh, actress is who's uh, playing me? And yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Um, so where to from here? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm kind of, like I said, I'm taking a little break from the writing and I'm, I'm, working on i have a little hobby where i make clay flowers yeah they're really gorgeous thank you thanks yeah. so i'm gonna continue with that i'm also poking away at a screenplay oh fun yeah so should be finished that relatively soon and oh, then fun. that's a whole new ball game because i've never yeah. written or tried to sell a screenplay before so we'll see how that goes oh cool yeah. i uh yeah. I read, I mean, I, I've taken some acting classes over the last mm -hmm. year and so read a bunch of screenplays and the oh, right, the yeah. writing is, and then, you know, worked on them and, yeah. and did scene study. The, oh, the cool. writing is so yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's, you know and what? It's, it, and it's I, so... I love that it just moves oh. and that like, instead of spending laborious hours over yeah. paragraphs yeah. and you can just kind of like, you got your plot out there and you, you just visualize it and you write it. Uh, and I'm a very visual person, so it's just a lot. Yeah, you can accomplish easier. so much in, in yeah. so fewer words, but with the acting totally. and whatever the visuals yeah. are. Yeah. But it, that seems like a, like a, not an easier dance, but yeah, that's like, yeah, that could be an easier dance. I think it's, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes. Interesting. For sure. Mm. How do, yeah. So how do you, do, was that an original idea? Yeah, it's, um, yeah. And I won't say much about it, but it's, it's, it's not about me. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's completely, um, not based on anything in my life, but it is about a mother daughter relationship, funny enough, but oh. completely different from mine. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, you know, you're, you're. You're, you're focused on your kids and your, mm -hmm. your relationships mainly mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. you, you've had a huge burst of creativity in the past and it's still brewing and mm -hmm. it's going to do mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Uh, again, That's kind of how it feels right now. Again in the future. So where, mm -hmm. so what would you say you're, you know, what, what are you, what are you learning about yourself these days, perhaps in, in your relationship with your kids or your mm. husband or, or just, you know, in this stage of your life where you're, those are the focus, mm. not on the, not mm. on the creative aspects. Cause yeah. I, I imagine the learning, even though you're not writing pen to paper type thing that you're still learning For other sure. things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great question. Um, I mean, I do still spend a lot of time thinking about like how I'm raising my kids compared to the way I was raised and trying to, you know, make sure I'm not, you know, repeating some of the same mistakes. And one thing I've learned about myself is that like, in some ways, I'm more like my mom than I'd like to admit. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That's, you know, I think a lot of people would say that. Um, and so, yeah, I, 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 uh, I've learned. I'm still learning how my past has affected me as an adult and I'm trying to improve on, you know, areas of my life that I consider to be kind of blind spots. So, so that, and I've also learned that, you know, um, I, that, you know, life is very much about phases and eras and, I'm becoming, I think I'm trying to become more accepting of that mm. um, because we want things to kind of stay how they are. And so learning how to accept change is, is I think a big, a big thing that I need to work on. Um, yeah. So, um, and also I've learned that uh, I, I really would like to, you know, uh, I love change. And, um, that kind of contradicts what I just said, because I, I love, I love eras and I love the security of, you know, knowing that there are, you know, people and things in my life that are working, but at the same time, I, I know that I get bored and I know that's from my past. And I like, cause it was like constant change when I was a kid. And, um, so yeah, I'm, we're, we're working on making some big changes right now. And, um, yeah, it just, it goes on and on. It doesn't get any easier. <laughs> right. But it gets different. <laughs> so do you get, do you get, I'm so impatient. I'm the worst. 
No. 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 <laughs> no. So does it, does it, and all these apps, all the things I have, I'm like, I'm like, maybe they're working. I don't know. Today, no. I don't know. Whatever. Right, right. But just to get frustrated when, when you're not, like, even though, like, right now, you're not even necessarily trying to get anywhere, it mm-hmm. sounds like right, right mm-hmm. now. There's nowhere to be. You right. are here. Yeah. We're 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 in it. Yeah. But still, right? But still yeah. we think yeah. something else and some other piece and some other home or whatever it is, right? So that you, this is same so true. you have the same torment? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, how do you how do you work with that? Well, I think that's part of what I'm working on right now is like trying to calm that beast a little bit and and be um, more present in, in what's happening at, at the moment and not always like being this person who needs the next thing, because that is like, it's an unfillable void. And so trying to just like, yeah, push that out a little bit and be like, no, I don't have to chase that right at this moment let's see if i still want to chase it in six months which i've never done before like i'm always like want that going for it you know and obviously you're good at that well i i am but like it it can be too much sometimes like i can you know decide i want to do something and then i go after without even like headlong right without really thinking it through it robs you of the present moment if we're always trying and being anxious about what what could or could not happen as well Exactly. Yeah. And that's something like, you know, your question before of what I'm learning about myself is like, or about life is, is that like, I have this insatiable, like I'm an Enneagram type three. <laughs> Which is, I, I don't know. I, I don't, what are it, well, those? Well, it's the achiever. Oh, and it yeah. means that you're just never satisfied. I got a piece of that. Always got to be achieving. What's wrong know? with that though? What? It's, it's, it's just an endless pit of yeah. misery. <laughs> so the Sam Harris app, that I, I'm listening to, he, he sends out these, it's actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm a fan, but mm-hmm. he sends out these, these, these moments at a couple times per day and they're mm-hmm. like a minute long or yeah. so. And I actually quite enjoy them when they pop onto my phone. But there was one yesterday where he was talking about if you, uh, if you think back to, to all these, these moments, like, you know, mm-hmm. when your book got publi- mm-hmm. published, the second one got published, mm-hmm. your, your, your kids were born or you got married. Um, and then if you think ahead to things you want to do and, and happen and his, his point was just like, you know, no matter where you were or, or what happened at that time or how you felt like that's just a memory. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. whatever happens in the future again, like it, none of, not that it doesn't matter, mm-hmm. but it's not, it doesn't really change who you are and how you are and what you're feeling right now. So even though right. we go and try to achieve these right. things, mm-hmm. we're still going to be sitting here in 10 or 20 years. Like yeah. if we choose tormenting ourselves, right. thinking about what else we're going to do in the future. Exactly. Yeah, totally. It doesn't make it much easier. It doesn't. And, you know, even when, I, when my, my books had just come out and I was kind of in the, the midst of, you know, promoting them and, and, you know, doing all that stuff that I dreamed about for a long time. I was already thinking about like, well, what's next? You know, yeah. what am I going to do next? What yeah. can I, how can I like do more? And so that's stupid. <laughs> but so have we reached a conclusion on how not to do this? No. <laughs> I know. Well, maybe we can laugh about it and be aware of it. It's kind of, kind of, that is kind of step basically. step one but i mean I, I like doing things and and spending my day mm. thinking and doing yeah but, you know as Eckhart tolle would say you got the the doing and then the being so right. you, you go for a walk and i have a lot of really nice moments throughout the week just like going for walks yeah. and seeing beauty and, that's and, good oh yes yeah good for you and talking to people mm-hmm. and and, mm-hmm. and thinking about things but the, the rest of the week is <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's I guess we're both work in progress on how to how to manage the the what we want to do and what we want to achieve. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And and also recognizing for me like I don't I don't know about you, I can't speak for you, but for me it comes from definitely this feeling of like that I was not enough, you know. And I think a lot of have, people have that I got it because my mom was always like kind of discounting me for her boyfriends and I was trying to win her love. And so it was like, I was not enough. And so you have to go out there and like achieve things and that will be enough. So just like, kind of like 
understanding that and 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 trying to to not be as controlled by that that's yeah mm -hmm. yeah i was talking about that with deidre who was sitting here last week mm -hmm. and something i've been thinking about like the self-worth right so if exactly. we're if we don't need to do and achieve to to either for ourselves feel like we're enough or prove to others yeah. which is and you know yeah. it's, it hurt it stings when you look back in the past and realize things you've done to try to achieve that yeah it's right? almost like kind of embarrassing <laughs> oh it's a thousand percent but hey you know if it got your first book written for sure, right yeah, like for kind sure. of a you know and you know when people ask me these days what i'm doing i can actually kind of say you know like not a whole lot and i'm okay with that like that's the first time i've ever really said that and oh my god can you hear my stomach rumbling that's so embarrassing no okay yeah, good you're... um <laughs> Um, yeah, I can, you know, I can say that and, and be okay with it. How, so, so how big, good does that feel? I think it's a big step for mm. me. And so I'm going to try and, you know, sit in this a little bit longer. Beautiful. Yeah. Cause then, yeah. Cause then, you know, ideally I've kind of been thinking and feeling ideal, sort of the, the mm -hmm. same things, or mm -hmm. at least thinking that mm -hmm. those are the words I'd like to say and right. also feel at the same time. With, yeah, without feeling like you need to qualify as something. Yeah, but yeah. I'm going to be doing this soon, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. even if we are in that state and we're creating things like podcasts or, mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. so then ideally we're not creating out of a sense of lack. We're creating out of a sense right. of joy or totally. inspiration or fun. or And I think what you said, uh, I was watching a, an interview where you said like in the first however many years when you were trying to, Mm -hmm. get a publisher mm -hmm. for north of normal mm -hmm. uh it was it was really kind of driven by money or fame or whatever right, it is right. but then when you mm -hmm. switched and pivoted to see that oh okay maybe i'm just meant to to share my story share my story and then things kind yeah. of switched totally uh, yeah it really was a moment of like chasing the like realizing i was chasing the wrong thing or chasing it for the wrong reasons and and like no wait actually the most important thing here is that like like i said i wanted to know if other people would connect with my story if they had stories similar to mine and that maybe you know there could be like some sort of uh help is the wrong word but you know Useful. you know connection yeah. relation right? Re yeah. relating between yeah. you know it, in regards to all of that and and that's when i started writing my story a lot more authentically i think <laughs> okay now okay we're 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 almost there but I, <laughs> a couple good ones here right well like what if what if what if we we can say we in this mm -hmm. or you or me or whatever like what if we don't achieve anything else for the rest of our lives that is a distinct possibility yeah well what i mean what if yeah. what if in terms of achievement and like creation mm -hmm. and, and making money or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a distinct possibility for everyone. Yeah. So is that a failed life or blah, blah, blah. But ideally we know there's an answer that, that yeah. says not. I think that for me at this point, I would have to say that like, you know, and I actually had this conversation with my husband the other day. I'm like, Oh, I'm not making any money. Like I feel like <laughs> such a loser. You know? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, Oh my God. Like, like honey, just can you stop, you know? And yeah, I mean, I'm lucky to have like a really, you know, supportive, great guy in my life, you know, but so things might be different if that were not the case. But right now I, I feel like, you know, my kids are my, my main priority, raising them and seeing them like become, you know, reach their potential, I think is, is for sure my focus right now. So if nothing else, I've got that and I've got, you know, books that I'm proud of writing and, and my movie and, you know that that that's that sure yeah i'll I'll take that <laughs> that's i mean that's a pretty that's good a, that's a pretty good line I'm, my I'm books good. and my movie yeah. and my yeah. kids like mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's that's my that's mm -hmm. a pretty good summary of success mm -hmm. i would i would mm -hmm. say i think and then yeah. you know ideally we get up and, and and feel in that state for however many years are, are left i think that yeah. alone is an ex a success like our people don't want us to see us beating ourselves down they want right. us to kind of revel in our amazingness right right, right. yeah yeah let's try that <laughs> okay so 
we're giving away this book, Nearly Normal, your second yes, book. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Right? I didn't have but, a copy of my first no. one at home. So, so <laughs> how we do it. If, when, you're lit, when you're watching this episode or listening to it, if you share it on, on social media, on Instagram, on this day that it comes out and tag Sia and I, then someone will win it. So where it's else? Signed. Signed. Where, where else can people find you? My books or me? Well, <laughs> your book, your books, your books and your movie. Uh, well, the books are like in pretty much in every yeah, bookstore. They're everywhere. Um, yeah. And the movie I, well, so uh, it's on Amazon Prime. I know that it's on Google Play. It's on Apple TV. Maybe some other ones. I'm not sure. Uh, and I think it's still in a couple theaters, but Amazing. I'm, I'm not sure. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And what else do we need to say? No, I think, uh, yeah, highly recommended. You know, whether you're a reader or if you're not a reader, watch the movie. That's kind of the, the sure. beauty of it. It's of only that. 90 minute, minutes long, too. It's not a long, yeah. it's, you know, it's a, it's a pretty quick watch. But it's so great that it's also available online now. Mm -hmm. After the, because it wasn't always for certain that it was going to go from, totally. from the, yeah. uh, the festivals to online. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, yeah, it's out there. And um, yeah, watch it and not. <laughs> so, last question. Okay. When we sit down in, in five, or, five or 10 years from now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you know what's, what's going to be happening, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have something to talk about, though, right? Hopefully. <laughs> well, you know, I don't, I know, even if we're, we're talking about the learning and the lessons, yeah. I don't think they, they stop. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, whatever the creations are, they, they, they be what may but it's, yeah but that's kind of exciting on its own like there's still life between now and then for sure for sure and um i mean if you're a creative person like you are too you know it's just it always finds its way back but you know i found that even with my first book like there were times in between drafts where i would let it lie completely fallow for like you know nine or ten months not even look about it not look at it not think think about it um and i do think that you you do if creativity is your thing you you need those times that feel very unproductive and are uncomfortable mm -hmm. but when you get back to it you kind of realize that you did need it yeah so well that's what like when you asked me when you first came in like where i got this idea mm -hmm. yeah i originally mainly got it at the beginning of the summer but that was after about nine months of doing jack all right because at the end of last There's year something about the nine months yeah the nine months where? of doing sweet because yeah. i was yeah. burnt i was burnt out and tired mm -hmm. from from writing the show and doing the show last summer and yeah. putting my whole brain yeah. into learning yeah, how to totally. act and it was yeah. so cool but i was like a zombie after right that. but For i sure. that was a very uncomfortable nine months of doing nothing because i felt useless and I worthless know. and so like like like, like where pent go, up. but where do i put but it? where do i yeah. put it yeah so yeah. next yeah. time that comes about, I think, you know, I think as each one of those, those, those phases comes, perhaps they'll be, we'll be a little bit more gentle on ourselves, but it's fun once you get the idea. Exactly. Yes, totally. Yeah. Try to be more gentle. On yourself. Exactly. And I'll take my own advice. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much. You. Thanks for coming. Thanks for Thanks. having me.